Hi class, the second part of our notes for today is writing a quadratic equation in standard form with given roots. So the way I like to explain this one is it's kind of like working backwards. Um, if you were to see this equation in standard form, x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0. The way that you would do this one is that you would first start off by factoring. So you'd get x and x and a negative 3 and a negative 2. After factoring, you would set each of these roots equal to 0, or each of these factors rather. So x minus 3 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0 to make x equals a positive 3 and x equals a positive 2. So your given roots, not your given roots, but the roots that you found, I guess, are x equals 3 and x equals 2. So what we're doing today, class, is we're starting with these two. And then we're going to work our way backwards. We're then going to go to here. After we do this step, we're going to go to here. And after this step, our answer is going to be the standard form of a quadratic equation. So this is going to be our answer. And the way we do that is by working backwards. If my roots are 3 and 2, we would say x equals 3 and x equals 2. Now, how do we go from this step to this step? We had to get a 0 on the right side. So let's get a 0 over here and over here. You would subtract 3 and subtract 2. So x minus 3 equals 0, and x minus 2 equals 0. So now we're up to here. Now let's go backwards another step. How did we get from here to here? We just put those factors and multiplied them by each other to get 0. So let's do that over here. x minus 3 is going to be multiplied by x minus 2 and set that equal to 0. Now, how do we get those two binomials to be a trinomial? Well, we simply multiply by foiling. First times the first, outside, inside, and last. So my answer, that trinomial, when I combine terms, combine like terms, x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0. So as you can see, what you're used to doing is getting a trinomial and getting roots. This time, you're going to be given roots. You want to find the quadratic equation in standard form. So we're just basically working backwards. So here's the first one. Our roots are 1 half and a negative 5. So as you can see from our graph, it crosses at a negative 5. Here's my origin right here. So a negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Crosses at a negative 5. And here's a positive 1. So it crosses at 1 half. Crosses at 1 half and negative 5. So with that being the case, what I want is I want a quadratic equation in standard form. So my roots are x equals a half and x equals a negative 5. Now I want to get a 0 on the right side. So first, I guess let's start off with this one. It's probably easier. All you have to do is add 5, so you get x plus 5 equals 0. Now class, I understand that you could just subtract a half from right here, but that is pretty sticky when we want to get into standard form. I should really stress what standard form is. Remember what standard form is is it's ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So you want your x squared term, your x term, and your constant term written in that way in descending order. So what's best when we write in standard form is let's get rid of this fraction. First, multiply both sides by 2, because that would get rid of the denominator here. So what you do to the left side, you have to do to the right side. So now 2x equals 1. And now to get a 0 on the right side, you simply subtract 1. So we would get 2x minus 1 equals 0. And then we also have the x plus 5 equals 0. Our next step, going back to this slide, once you have them equaling 0, once you have them equaling 0, which is this step, to go down to this one, you just multiply them by each other. So when we multiply them by each other, it is... 2x minus 1, that quantity times x plus 5. And now we multiply them together by foiling. 
first, outside, inside, last. And then we simply combine like terms. So my answer, 2x squared plus 9x minus 5 equals 0. This is my answer. It is a standard equation, standard quadratic equation, when we were given given roots. So now class, this is powerful. All we knew right here was where it crossed the x-axis. I didn't know if my parabola went up. I didn't know if my parabola went down. I didn't know if it was very long and skinny. I didn't know if it was very short and fat. There was a lot of things that I didn't know. The only thing I knew was that it crossed the x-axis at a half and that it crossed at a negative 5. Now how much do you know? By doing this work, you found out this. You now know that your graph is going to go up because your A value is positive. So it's going to look something like this. You know that your A value is a positive 2. So from a vertex, you're going to go up 1, right 2, up Sorry, sorry. Up 2, right 1. Up 6, right 1. Same thing with up 2, left 1. Up 6, left 1. So you know that your parabola is going to look something like this. With this, you could also find the axis of symmetry by saying it's a negative b over 2a. So you can do the negative 9 over 2 times 2. You can now substitute to find your vertex. So there's a lot more that we can do with just this than you can do with just the roots. This is very weak. You're limited. This is very strong. You can do a lot of things with the equation. So that's the benefit of doing this lesson. Next one, x equals a negative 1 third and x equals a negative 2. Those are your given roots. So you know it crosses at a negative 2. So where's the negative 2 at? So here's my x-axis. So a negative 2 is right there, and a negative 1 third is right there. So you know that it crosses at a negative 1 third and a negative 2, but without having this information, you really don't know too much else about it. So you want to put it into standard form for a quadratic equation, and that way you can do a lot more things. So why don't you guys pause the video and try this one on your own. As you solve this one, you said that x equals a negative one-third and x equals a negative two. Hopefully at this point you multiplied both sides by three. So you got three x equals a negative one. So then adding one, three x plus one equals zero. And then you just added two to get x plus two equals zero. So those are both of the factors. So we're going to set these factors and multiply them by each other. 3x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 2, that equals 0. And then after you set them, or after you've multiplied them by each other, you're actually going to do the process of multiplication by foiling. So 3x squared plus 6x plus 1x is a positive 7x, and then 1 plus 2 is a positive 2. So your answer for this one is 3x squared plus 7x plus 2. Last one for today. Actually, class, I, I lied there. There's going to be one more after that. So we have two left. x equals a negative 4. That's a double root. So I know that a double root, it doesn't cross the x-axis. It just hits the x-axis, and then it hops back up again. So my x-axis is right here. It says x equals so my x axis is right here and then it says it crosses at a or doesn't cross it hits at a negative 4 so my origin it's kind of hard to see my origin is right over here so negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 negative 4 as you can see the graph comes down and it doesn't cross through it hits negative 4 and hops back up again remember what that means as far as your roots are concerned. You're still going to have two roots. It's going to be x equals a negative 4 twice. 
and x equals a negative 4. So from this, we're going to find our standard equation, or our quadratic equation, rather, in standard form. So x plus 4 equals 0, and again, x plus 4 equals 0. So now, multiplying these two by each other, x plus 4 times x plus 4, that's going to be x squared plus 4x plus 4x is 8x plus 16. That equals 0. So this is our answer for problem number 6. x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 0. Now there's going to be one more, and it is tricky. As you can see, your solutions are imaginary. So imaginary zeros are ones that don't cross the x-axis. It might be a parabola that looks like this. It doesn't cross the x-axis. Or it might be a parabola that looks like this. Any parabola that does not cross the x-axis has imaginary roots. It does not have real roots. So we still want to put this into standard form. So now class, standard form never has i's in it. Okay, standard form it doesn't have those imaginary numbers in them. The roots are imaginary, but the equation is not. So this is a good check as you're doing this. Your answer should never have any i's in them. Now the process remains the same. It's just a little bit more difficult. Each of these equals 0. 1 plus 2i is a root that equals 0. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That equals x. x equals these roots just in the same as the other ones. So x equals 1 plus 2i, and x equals 1 minus 2i. As you can see, these are conjugates, 1 plus 2i and 1 minus 2i. They're identical things except for one difference, and that's the sign in between those two terms. So those are called complex conjugates, and our imaginary roots always, always, always come in complex conjugates. So now we want to get a 0 on the right side. So we're going to subtract 1 and subtract 2i. So x minus 1 minus 2i equals 0. And here we're going to subtract 1 and add 2i. So x minus 1 plus 2i equals 0. So now these two, you're going to multiply by each other. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. You're going to have a trinomial times a trinomial x minus 1 minus 2i and x minus 1 plus 2i. Now class, don't lose heart. This isn't a lot of fun. It's a lot of messy situations. However, I promise you, if you do it right, it's going to come out clean, which means that it's not going to have any i's in it. So stick with me here. We have to multiply a trinomial times a trinomial, which means you have to multiply this x by everything in this trinomial, the same thing with the negative 1 and the same thing with the negative 2i. So work with me. First times the first, x times x is x squared. Now you have x times a negative 1, which is a negative x, and x times a positive 2i is a positive 2ix. That's what happens when you multiply 2i times x, you get 2ix. So that's the first one. The negative 1 also has to be multiplied by all three of these. So what's a negative 1 times x? Negative x. What's a negative 1 times a negative 1? Positive 1. What's a negative 1 times a positive 2i? A negative 2i. All right, one last time. This negative 2i has to be multiplied by all three of these. So a negative 2i times x is a negative 2ix. A negative 2 times a negative 1 is a positive 2i. And a negative 2i times a positive 2i is a negative 4i squared. All this equals 0. Now you might say, Mr. Berge, you told me that we weren't going to get any i's in our equation. You lied to me. The answer to your argument, I guess, is I did not lie to you. All we have to do is combine like terms here to clean things up. So we have x squared. That's all we have for x squareds. How many x's do we have? A negative 1x 
minus 1x is a negative 2x. So that takes care of this, and that takes care of this. You have two ix's and a negative two ix's. What is two ix minus two ix? It would be zero ix. And what is zero times anything? Zero. So your ix is done, son. You have a negative two i and a positive two i. What is a negative two i plus two i? Zero i's. Done, son. So now you just have this positive 1 and this negative 4i squared. As a reminder from chapter 5, what does i squared equal? It equals a negative 1. So now what's a negative 4 times a negative 1? A positive 4. So what is 1 plus 4? Positive 5. That all equals 0. Whew! So your roots of 1 plus 2i and 1 minus 2i is going to get you a quadratic equation in standard form that will never have i's in them. And it's going to be x squared minus 2x plus 5. So don't be discouraged in Excel math when they ask you to do this and you see something like 7 minus 6i and 7 plus 6i. You go through this exact same process, set them equal to x, and then you have to do some work to get them equal to 0, multiply them by each other. The i's, I promise you, class, will always cancel out. So take heart in that. There's your answer, x squared minus 2x plus 5, that equals 0. If that doesn't quite sit well with you and you still have some questions, please feel free to ask me when you come to class tomorrow. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and let me know if you ever need any help.